All right, welcome to another edition of the Free Form Friday video, which will be changing to Saturdays because this guy is going back to work. So what's up, Lee? Oh. Yeah, um, how do you feel about that? Ah, I feel weird and cool at the same time. I know they're understaffed and underpaid, so I'll be under... I'll be there understaffed and underpaid, but I work my ass off. So I work so hard. Yeah. I, it looks like I'm lazy because I get everything done and I'm standing around waiting to do things. <laughs> yeah. But, but what I mean is like, um, have you ever felt before? Well, I used to feel long ago when I worked that when, for instance, I would tell my parents if um, I do not want to talk to anybody unless it's very important or it's a friend of mine or something. And I, what I meant by that was I do not want to talk to anybody who's going to give me a job because I don't want to work. No. But I do want to talk to my personal friends. And they said, hey, Lee, so-and-so called, but we said that you weren't wanting to talk to people. Now, but that's the guy who I wanted to talk to. Uh -huh. And then, and then um, the, the, the job people called and went, hey, Lee, yes, he's here. And then they hand me the phone. And I'm like, Shit. And, I, and I get very angry. And I said, why the hell did you give me the phone there? And they say, because that's important. It's a job. And I, <laughs> well, and then I, and I, and I, um, they, they constantly did that. They I constantly mean, did shit. That was like, uh, oh, uh, it, it's funny because I, I like my job. I just don't like sometimes the atmosphere is weird. Yeah. Sometimes the people there are weird. I just try to stick with the people I get along with and can do my job. And then the people I don't get along with that well, I just leave them alone and try not to talk to them only about yeah. work. Uh, and the thing is, I, I let's get into some music stories. On the Black album, the the Metallica, I had tickets to see them. And before I worked at in and out Burger in the 80s and mm -hmm. nine, uh, early 90s, like 87 to 93. And I had a huge fever. And oh. I called in sick two days before the concert. And my manager knew I was going to the Metallica concert because I asked for that day off the third day. And he said, well, you better be home when I call you because you better not be going to that concert. And I go, uh, so I told my mom to tell her, tell them that I'm sleeping and blah, blah, blah. I went to the concert with 101 fever, dude. I wasn't going to miss that tour, that concert. And then I saw them twice on that same three, three times on that same tour. It was amazing. And, but yeah. I, I went to the concert and I saw my friend's brother who works at in and out with me. And after the concerts, we all used to go to in and out on the way home, the one I work at. And he went there and he goes, hey, Scott, his brother's in there. He says, I saw Marky e. T at the, the Metallica concert. My manager was right there. He goes, oh, really? He had his mom lie for him? <laughs> and it's like, dude, why is he calling me at home? And I think about this now. I go, that's like it, the way Jobs used to do it. If you call out sick. They call That's you to make sure you're shit. home still. That's fucking totalitarian shit, man. It's That's, like if somebody That's calls absolutely them... stupid shit. It's like um, that, you know, people shouldn't do that shit. Yeah. And then he tells, then I get to work. He says, well, Danny Travato said you were working. You were, you were, you were at the concert. Cause he said he saw you to Scott and I go, fuck. And he goes, I'm not going to pay you for those sick days. I go, I was sick those two days. I went to the concert with a fever. Okay, I'll pay you for one of those days. And I go, oh my God. It's yeah. like, in, it's, I can, it's like, dude, you call in sick. I called in, I didn't call in sick from In-N-Out when I wasn't sick. 
I'm not one of those people who do that. Yeah. I don't call in. Even my managers where I work now, because you get a thing at, at work, you could call in sick one day and then call in continued for five days straight. They know when I call in sick, yeah. I'm basically back there the next day or the second day. I never take the whole five days. And they always come in and says, I knew you were going to be here today. I go, you did? Yeah, because you always come in after your sick day. And I go, yeah, because yeah. I'm sick. I try to come in if I'm not sick. I don't want to get people because people go into work sick and they get everybody else sick around them. Um, yeah. But I, I um, just pissed. I think about the way in and out treated us back then. I go, fuck, I could have sued the fuck out of that company because they, yeah. they would make you come in and work rushes to get raises. Hell, you need to get this. Why don't you come in on your day off and work and not get paid? Blah, 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 blah. Now they can't Damn. because of state laws. Yeah, it was like in the 80s, man. Employers used to fuck, screw you under, man. It's Didn't like, they ever let you have free hamburgers? Oh, you get a free hamburger on your shift, yeah. But That's you, cool. But you only got a 15-minute break for an eight-hour shift to eat it. Oh dear. And that's why um, I eat, that's why I eat so fast now because of that shit. Yeah. My wife I, says, slow um, down, enjoy your food. I yeah, leave me alone. I get it. Yeah. <laughs> One time, well, I was at home and I was going to go to work. And I decided to drink a little whiskey. My dad had some whiskey. And he was cool. I asked him, can I have a sip of whiskey? And he said, sure. And I said, can I have another sip of whiskey? And he said, sure. You just and rolled. I kept drinking whiskey. And, um, and that was and for I, comedy. He didn't do it on like, purpose. Oh, I'm going to go to work now. And, and a friend of ours um, who was there, said um lee um i don't think you should go to work now I went, i'm fine i'll be able to do a good job <laughs> and, um take my advice um i know you don't think you're totally wasted but you are you're not going to do a good job at work. And so I said, all right, I believe you, but I have to call in to tell them that I'm not going to be there. But since I'm totally drinking, I don't trust it. So I said, dad, can you call and tell them that I'm going to not be there and went, I'll do it as long as you understand that I'm going to say it exactly the way I want to say it. And I went, go for it. So he called them. He said, hello, this is Lee Gerstman's father. Lee will not be coming into work today because he is indisposed. Indisposed means indisposed. He is indisposed. That's what indisposed means. He is indisposed. Okay, thank you. And I was laughing. I was like, <laughs> that was so funny. Because uh, indisposed just technically means not available. Yes. But it's like the way he did it. He had, he had this way, like, if you don't understand the first time, I'll tell you again louder and louder <laughs> until you finally get it. <laughs> yeah, I, I, let me tell you about a concert. We went to the Van Halen, Van Hagar concert called The Balance Core mm. with Collective Soul Open, which Collective Soul was like an amazing opening act for them. I would have um, been there for them. Oh, well, we went, I went with my friend, John, his name is John Subney and my friend, uh, my other friend, uh, I can't remember his name right now, but I'm still in contact with him somewhat. But John Subney, I'm not, he was a total fucking drunk, dude. Have you ever seen a drunk? 
I fucking like, he gets so drunk, he gets so many DUIs. They had to put a breathalyzer in his car so he could start it. He is that huh. bad a drunk. Uh, I, he didn't drive. I drove to the concert with him and my other friend, and uh, Robbie. Robbie uh, was my other friend, and yeah. we get there. He's already fucking wasted. We smoke a joint out in the parking lot. We get into the concert. He just appears to go to the bathroom. He never comes back. And we're huh. I, I go I go out during the intermission, start looking for him, looking for him. Can't find him. I'm enjoying the concert, but I'm worried about my friend because I know he's a fucking lunch. <laughs> yeah. He's already drunk. He already pre-gamed before he got there. He was like, he talks like this. Yeah. That's the way he talked all the time. He slurred his oh. words like, and he was a total metal head, like and this and that. And again, I'm we're we're we leave the concert. We can't find him. We're looking all over the place. We just go home. We go fuck this shit after an hour. We go, we get, went home. And then the next mm. day I get a call from the Irwin uh Inglewood Police Department saying that John Sumney is there and he needs a ride home. Oh. So I drive to Inglewood. He said he's going to meet me in front of the forum. Not there. I go, what the fuck? Why did I drive all the way and he's not here? So then I get home and then he calls me and then I go to his house and I said, where the fuck were you, man? Oh, I got to ride home. Why'd you call me then? The fuck, man? Sitting there, wasted all that fucking gas. And then, and then he tells me the story why he disappeared. He went to the bathroom. He bumped into a security guard. He came out of the bathroom. He bumped into that same security guard. And then he was walking around and bumped into that same security guard again. And he says, you're drunk. And he called the cops on him and sent him to jail. <laughs> he kept bumping into the same fucking security guard over and over and over. <laughs> you know what? The bumping thing reminds me of I was in a record store in Berkeley, California, Amoeba Records. Oh, I need to go to that place, man. Yeah, yeah. And um, there was a guy who um, happened to walk by and accidentally bumped into me. But it was like a hard bump, but he didn't say anything. But I went, oh, excuse me. And then it happened again. And he bumped into me on accident. And I said, excuse me. And then I went to Rasputin Records up the street. And I kid you not, someone bumped into me again. And it was the same guy. Oh my God. And so what I did was I said, if he fucking bumps into me again, I'm going to punch him. But it didn't happen. You know, he didn't bump into me a fourth time. Don't you hate it? But when I, people... I'm thinking to myself, how the, what the hell? I mean, now, I mean, in New York, people aren't like that. People are cool with each other. In California, people are freaking wiggy. <laughs> wiggy, wiggy, wiggy. Woo! <laughs> you know, I'm probably the wiggiest person in Cal in, in, in New York. Hey, but don't you hate it when people bump into you? They bump into you. They walk straight into you. And you're the one who says, it, uh, oh, I'm sorry, excuse me. And they don't say anything to you. They're the ones who bumped into you. It's like now yeah, with, pe now with people, walking like on their, people walking on their phones, they walk into the fucking wall and they don't fucking, they walk into people and don't even fucking care. And it's like, yeah. what the fuck, man? I, why did I say excuse me to you? You're the one who fucking bumped into me, bastard. <laughs> yeah. It's like, fuck, man. Have you ever been to a concert where you just fucking walked out and left? Um, there was one concert that I went to um, like one of the not the very last, but one of the concerts that I went to right before COVID, where I went there strictly for the first act. And before that, there was another concert that I went there because I only wanted to see the first act. And then after the first act, then I left because I saw who I wanted to see. I got selfies. I talked with them. It was all good. And 
But there was another concert that I went to with a friend of mine, Magma. It was a great concert. And the thing is, their songs are generally usually 30 to 45 minutes long. They're not short songs. If you go to a Magma concert and you want to see a two or three minute songs, you are not going to find it. And, and um, we saw basically the whole regular concert. And then they did an encore and the music was fantastic. And I wanted to stay to see the whole thing, but it was after midnight. And if we didn't rush to the bus, we would have been stuck in San Francisco without transportation back or something like that. So it really hurt to have to leave. But the one consolation that I had was my friend who paid for both of our tickets. He wasn't able to see the whole thing too. So I thought at least the fact that we both missed the, the song that was um, made me feel a little better, but it was a wonderful song. I, I, I really wanted to see it because it was great, but I will say that I saw it, the whole thing before the encore, but um, if, if I saw Magma again, I would want to be sure that I would be able to see the whole thing because they're a great band. But yeah, they're, they're a group where I had to leave because the, the, the train going back stopped at a certain time and I wouldn't have been able to get back home in time before then. And, and I know from experience, once I had to rush to the subway, they call it BART, Bay Area Rapid Transit in um, Northern California. But yeah, I know, I've been on there once. Oh, okay. And, um, and I had to rush to make it back in time for the last bus. And there were about 10 or so homeless guys by the Burger King in sleeping bags. And they saw me and they said, hi, boyfriend. And they all said, hi, boyfriend. Hi, boyfriend. And I thought, if I don't get back on BART, I'm going to have to fight off about 10 boyfriends. <laughs> you know, so. <laughs> well, you're like a so bear. That, you that, know. that was a bit <laughs> creepy. Creepy McCreepers in there, but I I went to two concerts. One I wanted to walk out of because the closing the but I couldn't because the closing act was the Rolling Stones, and I didn't want to miss them. I went to the yeah. the Rolling Stones Steel Wheels tour at the LA Coliseum with Living Color and Guns and Roses opening. Living Color was amazing. They're a band that we need to review their first album on. All uh, right, I really love that band. Uh, the guitar Vernon Reed is really great. And that's a concert. I went to the second day and he called out Guns N' Roses for the first day for being unprofessional when I saw them. And then Guns N' Roses came on stage and was unprofessional again. It sounded like shit. And then the Rolling Stones came on and all was okay. And then I went to the Metallica Guns N' Roses show at the LA Coliseum again when they went on tour together. And... Luckily, Metallica, it was their turn to open because it was co-headlining. So Metallica opened and they fucking kicked ass. They were great. They fucking sounded amazing. And then Guns N' Roses comes on, fucking slashes, sloshing all over the stage, fucking out of tune, fucking, fucking Axel is throwing a huge fit on stage. Me and wow. my friend Robert Terry are sitting there looking at each other. We took the, we got off work early to go see this shit. We we're happy to see, we bought tickets that day. We're happy to see Metallica I go fucking Metallica. And then he looks at me and says, Mark, let's go take some bong rips. Fuck this shit. Oh, yeah, let's go. And we left right after the third song. <laughs> we go, fuck this shit. That's and, smart. And I always say, 
that Guns N' Roses acts professional now because of ACDC. Because um, he, they, may, they said, you need to show up on time. You need to be here on time. You need to act professional. And now Guns N' Roses is doing their thing again. And I hear their shows that amazing. And I, I, I tweeted them. I said, you guys owe me a fucking free ticket, man. You guys sucked twice. I had to walk out of the second show. <laughs> you know, fuckers. Yeah, there was there was a friend of mine um, who, when he was in L.A., he was in the post office and he saw Axl Rose and he said, oh, by the way, aren't you Axl Rose? And Axl said, no, I'm not. And the guy, went, what, what? No, no, um, don't get me wrong. I'm not trying to be like a, you know, big fan or nothing. I'm, I'm, I just want to tell you that I think groups like Jefferson Airplane and Quicksilver Messenger Service and groups like that are much better than you guys. You know, they 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 do much better stuff, and you're you you know you're 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 nothing compared to them. And Axel said, "That's cool." <laughs> and then they ended up having a really good conversation. Nice. I I people don't like to use your illusion albums. I love them. I think you can cut off about four songs off of them, but you don't need to have two versions of "Don't Cry." <laughs> it's like um, get rid of one of them and fucking my was world the guy, just needs to go <laughs> there was a guy i knew named james where when i had parties in my house he would dress up in like a suit and tie he looked like michael j fox like right. like, like 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 if you could imagine michael j fox from family ties in his suit and tie and everybody else is dressed like just regular but but he was a cool guy, you know? And um, he said, hey, you know, um, I'll loan you. I have both used your illusion albums, but right now I only have the first one. Uh, no, I mean, I only have the Use Your Illusion 2 on cassette that I can let you borrow. And, and I'll come back the next day or whatever for it, but I'll, I'll let you borrow it because I'd like you to hear it because I think it's a great album. So I said, sure. So I heard most, almost all of it. And he came back and I gave it to him and, and it was like, so I got to hear it, but it was like, he, he thought he liked both of them, but he thought the second one used your illusion two was a little bit better. That was his opinion. I think use your illusion one is a masterpiece. Okay. Com coma dead horse. Fucking, I love those two songs. Fucking Coma, I used to get fucking so high to that song. Fucking with the boom, 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 yeah. boom. And the fucking slash fucking coming in. Fuck, we need to review both of those albums. You should do, use your, I, we should do it um, on one pot. Should we do it? I able to handle listening to all of it again. Um, what I would have to do is look at the review that I did on my channel and just write down the notes for the songs but that why, I already but did. But if you listen to something again, it might change. You know, you know, you know that. I know that my opinion changes sometimes, but I don't need you to remind me of it. I think we should make it a two-part episode. Use your illusion part one and use your illusion part two and make it together because I don't think well, we should what put I the understand. And it's maybe somewhat of a of a rumor, but I think what I hear is Slash thought that the first Use Your Illusion album was the, the right version and that it might have been Duff, I'm not sure, but one of the guys, the other guys thought the second version of Use Your Illusion should have been the album. And that since both of them had differing opinions, they the, the producer decided, well, then why don't we just put out both? Yeah, I bought them on the same day at Tower Records, man. I went there opening day and bought them both. And I've always clung to the first one more. I love You Could Have Been Mine on the second one, but there's so many epics on the first album. It's like Coma, fuck. That song yeah. itself just makes that album better. Dead Horse. I, I just fucking love those two tracks so much. 
And fucking yeah, Civil War is on the I, I is Civil War exactly on the first one or the I second said about one? Everything, but yeah, well, I gotta see something, man. I I could be wrong. My memory, I'm getting old. Memory goes, and it, it, when music memory starts to go, that fucking sucks. Mm. Let's see what I yeah. Got when here. when you forget bands that you hate, that okay, sucks, so, right? I'm here, here's the songs I like on. Uh, I'm not gonna. I, Civil War is on the second album. Uh, locomotive estranged that's good see you could have been mine but the first album fucking has dust and bones live and let die don't cry fucking uh back off bitch double talk and jive november rain the garden i fucking love garden of eden i like uh bad apples dead horse and coma that album just trumps fucking the second album just so many epics on the first one yeah i I'm not a fan of either all the way through, but I kind of agree with you that the the first one has at least a couple of better tunes than the second. Well, when we were cruising Hollywood, we played, We I had both of them. We only played Use Your Illusion 1. We didn't play fucking Use Your Illusion 2, even though we all liked You Could Have Been Mine. But we felt that song was kind of overplayed. We liked the deep tracks. Coma wasn't a fucking single. That fucking song just fucking kicks ass over estranged. It's fucking great, but that's my favorite fucking epic. November Rain is great too. I like Estranged better than November Rain, though, but November Rain's cool too. But um, I just like the Slash's guitar tone on Estrange better. It's like all right, you know, it's a, and the way Axel's voice sounds in a piano is fucking cool. Um. But what is the worst concert you ever been to? Um. Oh, mine was Guns N' Roses and also uh, that other band. I can't think of them, but go ahead. I'll think of the other band. It's hard for me to think about a worst concert because all of the groups that I saw were basically pretty good um there's a singer named noah who um she's from israel and she doesn't hardly do too many i think he sent me some of that in stuff. um new york her album is really good i probably wouldn't have you review it because you wouldn't be sophisticated enough to enjoy it but are you um, calling me a redneck geek? Actually, well, Pat Metheny. Well, I'm drinking some um, whiskey um, here. Produced the album. Do you know who Pat Metheny is? Yeah, I don't. He's adult contemporary, isn't he? He's kind of jazzy. He worked with Joni Mitchell on yeah, her I, electric stuff. I like some of Joni Mitchell stuff, but well, well, anyway, um, it it, it, it was in a church. It was like a Jewish church thing, but I wanted to see it because I wanted to see her because she does a song, I Don't Know, which is a wonderful song. And she did do it, but but it was mostly like basically people doing political kind of stuff. And, and it wasn't bad, but I would have preferred to see her in a real concert of just her but i was still glad to see her i'm not going to say it was a really bad concert but i will say that it 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 wasn't really great because um the people there were more about promoting whatever it is that they did than the music but i would have to say other than that um, Oh boy! Um, give, 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 give me a give me just a quick moment. I, can I tell would you that say, I would say probably. I I really can't say that I um know of any other group that was um um too bad that i didn't like if if i think of it later i'll let you know 
I'll tell you my top three worst concerts. Guns N' Roses, Violent Femmes, number three is Dire Straits. Okay. Um, but I was at the dire, uh, the tour where they were fighting the, on every street. That album was good. I liked Calling Elvis. I liked the songs on that album. But it was just disjointed. It wasn't like Mark Knopfler. It wasn't like, it just seems like they were up there going through the motions. And then Violent Femmes, there's like three guys on a fucking huge stage singing acoustic fucking songs, not even not even doing their fucking electric shit. They I, didn't do Gone Daddy Gone. They did, did they? but it was acoustic. I love hmm. their albums, man. They even they had one album produced by Jerry Harrison of the Talking Heads. It's really good. Uh, but fuck. I was like disappointed. People were stage diving off the fucking violent things. Oh. How are they um, stage diving? There's no fucking energy. And it, there was no energy in fucking the Dire Straits show either. It was just bleh. But I'll tell you the best concert that people are going to probably freak out because I watch a lot of heavy metal rock concerts of my life. The best concert that had the most energy I've ever seen in my life was fucking Bruce Springsteen Tunnel of Love. Okay. Um, I thought of the group now. <clears throat> um they weren't horrible, but um, there was a group called Zero, and the guy, John Ferre, who was like the leader of the group, he um, was my sister's piano teacher and, and stuff, and um, they did an album called Here Goes Nothing, and it's kind of like jazzy stuff, but it's kind of like progressive rock jazz, but it's kind of like really... Like, I I don't know if you've ever heard Spyro Gyra. I heard the, of them. They're a jazzy band. Yeah, I know who. They yeah, are. yeah. Um, they're 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 they're. It's kind of like if if you go to your aunt's house and she just serves you a big plate of mushed peas and goes, "Hi, do you want a plate of mushed peas and some iced tea? We don't have tea in it. It's just water, but." hey enjoy and then then they all listen to this kenny g type of bunk you you you, you've ever heard kenny g yes yeah yeah um i don't like clarinet yeah yeah he he, um he um or saxophone or whatever he does yeah yeah um he's he's it's stuff that makes me want to go like this not not so hot um but 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 anyway set over um zero um did a concert and it was in the fairfax festival because it was like like a festival that was a free festival and people go there and fairfax california and they buy sandalwood soap or tie-dyed shirts and they listen to this hippie type of jazzy music or something but it was kind of boring but i will say that neil Schoen did show up and perform on a song and and he was good He's so that good. wasn't bad i've and, never and seen a bad later, neil Schoen. And, and and then later they did another concert with banana who was the um keyboards with the young bloods and they were better because he was in the concert with them and he had a cool sound. So they did play better the second time at the festival, but the first time it, it just sounded like if you had a salad at this restaurant and they charge you $60 for the salad and they just give you a great big bowl of lettuce with no dressing or nothing, You'd probably think this is this is not worth my time, and that was sort of how zero sounded to me. Yeah, I don't know zero, but uh, I give you um, my I, I I I'll tell you my best concert. Like I said, Bruce Springsteen. Yeah, you're gonna hate this one. Def Leppard and Tesla Hysteria tour in the round. Def Leppard was in the round. That was fucking amazing with all the fucking lasers going everywhere. And Tesla on their first album was fucking amazing opening for them. 
Did they do trucking the same way that they do? No, on that? they didn't even do trucking. It was their first album before they even did the five man acoustical jam. Okay. Yeah, it was their first album, and fucking Def Leppard came out and kicked ass. And my fucking third favorite concerts is Rush. I didn't okay. even put Rush number one. I love Rush, but fucking Bruce Springsteen and fucking Def Leppard kicked their ass. I'm sorry. I, Rush is, you see my shirt? Rush is my no, favorite band of all time. Because I've seen Rush more than any any show, man. I, I'm happy I get to see three concerts coming up. I get to see the Black Crows. I get to see Candlebox and I get to see Pat Benatar. I'm fucking so jazzed about that. Candlebox, you said? Yeah, I got tickets for Candlebox. Oh. Have you heard them, Lee? I I, I try to forget. Well, we're going to do the first album or the second album with Paul Korn soon, so. Um, Not the group Korn, I hope. No, Paul Korn. I know. <laughs> because uh okay kevin martin has an amazing voice dude and that band is not fucking grunge dude it's fucking like jam they could fucking do a song and fucking fucking just jam on it dude you should listen to kevin martin's solo band called kevin martin and the high watts and then go back and listen to candlebox and tell me what you think okay i'll listen to kevin martin's whatever it and is, the high watts then, because i'm huh? thinking i'm thinking you have just the name Candlebox gets an E in your name because you probably never really listened to them. I listened a little bit and I, and I, and I, you probably I listened to Far sleep. Behind or You, you know, you probably listened to the two singles and gave up. You never listened to the song Rain or their deep tracks off their first album. I, 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 I didn't listen to hardly anything of them. It's like people who listen to Ugly Kid Dro think, oh, the hate everything about you band, where they go, I don't really care about your sister, where they kind of rap, and I go, fuck, is that the only song you know? That song fucking sucks. Fucking listen to their other shit, man. Their second album. Okay, I'll listen to it, you... you, you, you. I hate it when people judge a band on one song and then never go back and listen to the other songs on it. It's like, it's like extreme fucking... They don't listen to they listen to fucking the acoustic song, but don't listen to Susie Wants Her All Day Sucker. Yeah, it's like if I listen to 10 songs by Candlebox and I don't listen to the other two, then I'm missing out on their two good songs. <laughs> you should listen to the album Lucy. Listen to Lucy first. Is Second that album? So should I listen to first the Kevin Mitchell shit? Listen to Kevin the... Martin and the High Watts. It's more kind of artsy rock it's really good and then and then listen to lucy yeah because his voice is just so amazing it just oh it's just like love his voice oh goody it's not lane staley okay you don't like lane um i just didn't like that heavy syrupy grungy shitty kind of box music Candle box isn't syrupy grunge, man. They're just rock. Okay. With a little bit I'll of jam take your rock. Word for with it. a little bit of jam rock in them, dude. They a can little play. bit of jam, a little bit of peanut butter, a little bit of yum yum yum. All right. A little man. bit of jam, peanut but, butter, and yum yum. Let's go out on that song and let's just Yeah, fucking... thank you, because I'm 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 starting to get annoyed at your suggestions. I'm gonna send you a Kevin Martin and the High Watt song after we get off of here all right man if say goodbye choose. lee let's get the fuck out of here bye bye